we're now going to talk about changes of state. Okay, and just basically how certain properties go into different states. So from a, from a solid to a liquid to a gas, or um, back and forth from those processes. And we're going to look at that from a molecular and a particle perspective. Um, so we're going to look at how what what the um, what materials look like from a particle point of view when they're in these different stages of a solid, liquid, and gas, and then what happens when they change into different states. Okay. So we're going to look at what the molecular behavior looks like um, through those transitions, and we're also going to look at kind of a common misconception um, about evaporating and boiling. So there's a difference between the two, and we're going to look at that um, because that is one of the ways that uh, a state of matter can change is through boiling, which takes it from a liquid to a gas. Okay, so stages, states of matter. This is uh, a review of stuff that's uh, – some of it might be common sense, uh, some of it you learn in key stage three, or you learn when you're a bit younger. So here's the three main stages of matter. There's a solid, a liquid, and a gas. There's also a fourth stage of matter called plasma, but we're not going to worry about that for right now. Plasma consists of uh, charged particles or charged ions. But again, we're not going to worry about that uh, quite yet, because these are the three that come about in everyday experience and the three most important for thermodynamics. So solid to a liquid, if a solid transitions to a liquid, that's what's known as melting. So think of water as the one that is most commonly used in everyday experience. So ice melts into liquid water, and then if you boil or evaporate, that becomes a gas. So boiling and evaporation is the process of going from a liquid to a gas. If we go to the reverse side, from a gas to a liquid, that's what's called condensation. And so on a really um, humid day, you might get condensation on the windows. All right, and liquid to a solid, that's when something freezes, and that moves from a liquid to a solid. So <coughs> energy comes out of there. Excuse me. Now, if something goes from a solid directly to a gas, and that requires a large input of energy and very quickly, that's what's known as sublimation. And to go through a reverse process from a gas to a solid, that's what's known as de deposition or sublimation or resublimation. It has a, a number of names. Okay, so... Solid, a liquid, and a gas. What exactly do these look like? So this is um, something that I remember teaching when you were seven. So it's something that um, you learn quite quite a ways back. Um, but we'll do a quick review. So gases, basically, if we look at these type of particles, okay, they have a lot of energy, okay, and so they're free to move essentially wherever they want. They're not constrained, and some may even get out okay they're they're very energetic and very very widely spaced apart okay now for a liquid these these don't have quite as much energy so they're more constrained to a certain region Okay, so not quite as much energy, less energetic, and essentially, what that means is that they can't very easily escape, and so they stay kind of constrained by the container that they're placed in. Okay, and that's why none escape. Now, some will escape, and we're going to talk about that later when we talk about evaporation and boiling. But it's not a very large number. The vast majority stay in here, constrained by the container. So they're not as free to move about as the gases. And finally, a solid. Well, solids basically don't have a lot of energy. Okay, a lot of free energy, a lot of free kinetic energy. And so they basically make very ordered um pieces of matter just like this and they are basically constrained to be stationary all right so that's gas solid and liquid but basically the difference is these are very energetic as gas particles whereas a solid they have less energy but where does that energy go it goes from kinetic energy to potential energy so there's lots of potential energy in a solid okay so There we go. Sorry, some technical difficulties. All right, so brings us to phase changes. So 
here you have basically temperature along the y-axis and heat energy which is along the x-axis okay so as heat energy increases we're gonna see what happens to temperature so let's start here so this is a solid material like an ice cube for example so as heat energy increases you see the temperature starts to increase as well so heat energy gets put in the temperature increases which means the kinetic energy of the particles in the solid also tend to increase then at this point here as more heat energy goes in the temperature stays constant and what's happening here is basically that the heat energy the energy is going towards the particles within the solid and it is decreasing the potential energy okay so what it basically is doing is breaking the chemical bonds in this material and it's freeing them which lowers the total potential energy of this system and then so that's what happens and then eventually a lot of the bonds are freed and it becomes a liquid okay so becomes a liquid and then these again the heat energy as the heat energy increases temperature increases as well until we get to this point and at this point we have the same thing happen where there's a lot of potential energy contained in here now not as much potential is contained in the solid but there's potential in the liquid and as heat energy increases the temperature stays constant what's happening is basically it's freeing the bonds from a liquid and it's going to become a gas now if this was water this happens at 100 degrees Celsius that's the boiling point of water whereas the boiling the freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius and then as that happens the gas turns into vapor water vapor and again you put heat temp heat energy into it the temperature increases which is why water liquid water can't get any higher than 100 degrees Celsius because it just turns into water vapor if we do the reverse process then we take energy out well if you take energy out of the system um, it loses some of that kinetic and it becomes potential so it goes backwards heat condenses to a liquid and then it goes down the liquid temperature lowers and then it freezes and then that transition takes place becomes an ice cube and then it moves down okay so the process moving in this direction where we put energy into the system is known as endothermic okay thermic well that's thermal so that's temperature we're putting temperature into it and then here this is known as exothermic okay and that's moving in this direction and so what's happening here is we're taking heat energy away from the system okay not that's something you need to know this is more um, it comes a lot quite a bit in chemistry these are not words that you'll need to know for the IB physics but um, it kind of helps you relate it to some of the other courses you're taking if you're taking chemistry okay so the next thing we're going to talk about is the difference between boiling and evaporation okay so ex what is um, how are they different and how are they similar okay so essentially in boiling what we have is basically um, the whole surface so the whole thing we have a liquid here all right so let's use water we've been using water as our example and what essentially happens is the whole thing gets heated very rapidly okay so it gets heated and what happens is that a good number of these a good number of these particles get liberated in the liquid okay so the whole thing gets heated they gain a lot of energy gaining lots of energy okay and anywhere um, liquid particles from anywhere in here can get be liberated so once from the bottom get heated and they basically gain so much energy that they jump out and they escape and they become vapor okay whereas there we go whereas in this example so evaporation it happens very slowly so it's much less energetic and it can happen on a calm day just like we see here what happens is the surface molecules within those particles some of them gain enough energy like I mentioned earlier to escape 
Okay. Now, what's what it's going to be is basically the surface molecules, because these ones at the bottom they may have a lot of energy, but they're just going to move up and they're going to move around the liquid, whereas some particles will have just enough energy to escape the surface of this liquid. Okay. And so the rate of evaporation can be increased in a couple ways. First, if you heat this up, so if you increase the energy, they're going to move around much more rapidly. Some of them are going to have enough energy to escape. The other thing you can do to increase the rate of evaporation is basically increase the surface area of the um, of the liquid, because what that means is that there's a lot more surface molecules. Okay, and if there's much more surface molecules, if they have enough, if they have sufficient energy, then they're going to escape the surface of the liquid. Okay, so evaporation mostly surface molecules. Boiling can happen through the whole thing. And what basically happens is the pressure of these molecules, um, a more formal definition, is is the pressure of these molecules is going to increase the is going to equal, excuse me, the atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is pushing down, the pressure from boiling increases, and the two essentially become equal. Okay, so that's no, no, no. Oh, sorry. There we go. So that's what we have to say about boiling and evaporation. So we're going to look a bit more closely at the phase transitions that happen between phase of change and look at specific latent heat.